Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on who cares how many pieces are hanging. It's also number 8 in the series, The Bishop Rules, and I have to thank a viewer, Ruin, for pointing me towards a game that I'm going to show you in this video, played in 2002 in the NAO Masters, NAO. And let me give you a bit of background on that tournament from magazine New in Chess from 2002. From posters displayed around the town, it was evident that the Category 18 tournament would be the strongest ever held in France, and that it bore the mysterious name of the NAO Masters. The abbreviation NAO turned out in fact to be not the name of some company or bank, but the initials of a pretty woman, somewhere in the region of 40, with an energetic gait and dressed in jeans and a simple sweater. Her full name is Nahet OJ. she is the daughter of the Syrian Defense Minister Mustafa Tlasa, and the widow of a multimillionaire from Saudi Arabia, Akram Oje, who made his fortune from arms dealing. And there's a picture of the pretty lady. And this is Madame Nahet Oje, who sponsored this tournament. It was held in Cannes in the south of France, and the tournament was going to be won by Boris Gelfand. In the first round, Veselin Topalov played Alexander Morozevich. Topalov would become FIDE World Champion three years later, and Morozevich, one of Chess's favorite sons, the enigmatic Grandmaster from Russia. The picture in the thumbnail is Veselin Topalov, not from 2002. I was not able to find a suitable picture from Topalov from that era. It's the 22nd of February 2002, and Topalov opened with e4, e5 from Morozevich, and we got the Rui Lopez, the Spanish opening on the board. a6. Bishop drop back, knight f6, Topalov castled, b5, kicking the bishop back to b3, and here bishop e7 is the main theoretical move, but bishop c5 was played by Morozevich, also very common. Here c3 is the main move, but a4 is also playable and was played by Topalov, with the threat of taking on b5, as then black cannot recapture because the rook in the corner is hanging, is unprotected. So rook b8 is the move, and c3, preparing d2, d4, pushing in the center. d6, there comes d4, bishop dropped back, and Topalov took on b5, and played knight a3, attacking that b5 pawn. Borzevich castled, giving up the b5 pawn, which is considered the best way to play for black, Topalov said, thank you very much, I'll take the pawn, and bishop g4, pinning the knights. Now there are different options played at grandmaster level. Bishop e3 is a move, rook e1 is a move, and bishop c2 is a move, and that's the move that was chosen by Topalov in this position. h6 is a rare move, most grandmasters games continue with bishop takes f3 or e takes d4. But h6 was played by Morozevich, and Topalov took on e5. d4, d5 instead was played the next day in round 2 by Peter Leko. The exact same position came on the board, and Leko pushed the pawn to d5 against Morozevich, which is a more ambitious choice than the move played by Topalov, d takes e5. Knight takes, knight bd4, and d5, pushing in the center. Topalov took. Queen took back, Topalov asked the bishop a question, and the bishop dropped back to h5. g4, chasing that bishop again, and now we see some nice tactics. Here Morozevich played the best move, he took on g4 with the knight from f6. If you now take on g4, that is possible, then there is bishop takes, knight takes e5, he can give up the queen, bishop takes d1, there is knight dc6, with a threat of a fork on e7, which would win the queen back. So black plays rook b e8, and then rook takes d1, and this position is roughly equal. White has three minor pieces for the queen. That is playable, but Topalov, after knight f takes g4, did not take the knight. He took on e5 instead, took the other knight. Knight takes e5. Queen takes h5, now that bishop is unprotected. And now a very nice move, bishop takes d4. That's already a little the bishop rules move, but we'll see a much, much more amazing bishop move later. 
This move wins that piece on d4 because white cannot recapture. You may want to look for yourself. Why is c takes d4 not possible here? It's very simple. Knight of three check wins the queen. It's checked to the king and attacking the unprotected queen at the same time. And black will win. So after bishop takes d4, black got his piece back. White cannot capture and Topalov played queen f5. The queen is protected there. Knight f3 check came anyway. If you go to g2, that's a big blunder because knight h4 is a fork of king and queen. Topalov saw that and played the king to the correct square, h1. The queens were swapped and bishop f6, saving that bishop. The smoke has cleared and it turns out that black has got his pawn back from that knight capture on g4. Material is equal. But white has the two bishops, the bishop pair, in this endgame position. The game continues. Rook a7. Rook's on the 7th rank. Always powerful. c5 to save that pawn. Bishop e4. White is slightly better with his bishop pair. Knight e5. Rook d1, bringing that rook into the game. Knight c4. Attacking the b2 pawn with two pieces, with rook and with the knight. Bishop b7. Solving that problem, bishop g5, those bishops were swapped, and b3 to save the pawn. The knight got, went back to e5, rook d5 hitting the knight again, rook f8 protecting the knight, and white wins a pawn. Rook e7, putting pressure on that bishop on b7, and rook b5 to protect the bishop a second time. Topalov has outplayed Morozevich in the last 10 moves and has now good winning chances with his extra pawn and active pieces. Here g6 is the best move according to the engine and Topalov still has to prove that his advantage is a winning advantage. But here Morozevich blundered. He played the knight from e5 to d3. And why is that a blunder? Well now we get this amazing bishop move. Which in fact is also the last move of the game. You may want to look for yourself. Put the video on pause. And can you see the move that Topala found here? It was bishop b7 to e4. What an incredible move. All three white pieces are now hanging. As well as the pawn on f2 with a check. And black cannot take any of them. When I researched this game. I saw a post from an internet viewer who said. Who cares how many pieces are hanging. If you're threatening mate. And that's what I chose as a title for this video. Let's look at the variations. Can black indeed not take any of the white pieces? And is the position that bad that he has to resign here? Because that's what Morozevich did. The game finished here. What if we take the rook on a7? Well, that is simple enough. Then rook takes b8. It's checkmate. That's why the bishop went to e4 to take the h7 square away from the king. Okay, let's go back. So we cannot take the a7 rook. What about the b5 rook? Well, then also we see a checkmate. Rook a8 check. And all you can do is interpose your rooks, which get taken. And this is checkmate again. But what about if we take the bishop? That bishop is also hanging. It was played to e4, but that square is controlled by black. So what about rook takes e4? Well, rook takes b8 check, king h7, and rook takes f7. And white has won an exchange and has a winning material advantage. So that doesn't work either. Finally, what if we take that pawn with check? King g2 and now we cannot take the bishop because white will win both black rooks. First take on b8 with check. The king has to move and then we take the other rook and white is winning. Let's look again. Knight takes f2 check. King g2. We cannot take the bishop we just saw. So rook e2 e8 for example. But then white wins a piece with rook takes b8. You have to take back and king takes f2. And white has won a piece. One more time. Knight takes f2 check. King g2. We cannot play the other rook to e8 to protect the rook. We cannot play rook b e8 because then we get checkmated again after rook takes e7. Rook takes and the back rank is a problem for black. This is checkmate. The bishop is still alive on e4. Morozevich saw all this and resigned after bishop b7 to e4. And Topalov had made a great start of the tournament, winning in round 1 in 33 moves. 
finishing off with that amazing bishop move, hanging all white's pieces, but forcing black to resign. Thanks again, Rune, for pointing me to this game. I hope you enjoyed it. The bishop rules. And what about our game? Rick against a chest to impress viewers. I'm playing white, you're playing black. Your last move was knight d7 to b8 to protect the a6 pawn. And I played last Sunday during the viewers game video bishop e2 to d3 to make your break move f7 f5 more difficult. And it is your move now. What would you play in this position? You can take part in this game by putting your move in the comment section underneath this video. By doing that you will not only be part of this very exciting and very complex game, but you will also be in the raffle for a chess book. At the end of the game I will raffle a chess book made available by my sponsor the best of Z. Amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game, I'm looking forward to seeing your move in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess So Impressed channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you like the video, if you like this piece's rule series, then please share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. The link to the this piece rules series is in the description box underneath this video. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.